Before we begin, remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this with anyone who you think needs to hear this message. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can click the join button, become a member, and get access for free to the exercise performance course where I teach you to squat, bench, deadlift, shoulder press, do pull-ups, and dips. Not only that, but you will also get the audiobook of the book, of Puck, narrated by me, and also the exclusive podcast for members, The Coffee Cast, where we do weekly Q&As. Now that we've had that out of the way, let's begin. Yes, let's begin. I like this better. I compared some of the footage of a couple of streams ago, and I was not happy with the camera angle and the lighting, but this is better. Now it, does, it doesn't look as dark in here and things like that. So that's good. Hi, everybody. Smash the like button. Good to see everybody. How are you? I am doing well. I strained my wrist a little bit, but other than that, I am perfectly fine. I started watching a new show called Pantheon. It's pretty fucking interesting. And there goes the monetization. Apologies. But it's been pretty interesting. It's about uploading consciousness into artificial intelligence and into like the cloud and things like that. It's actually pretty, pretty interesting. But that is not what we're going to talk about today. What we are going to talk about today is motivation for the gym. I know, I know. You've heard it all before. Like Abud telling you that you just need one more rep or uh, what's his name? David Goggins, that I used to be fat and living with cockroaches, and now I'm here on Instagram running, telling you you can be better and all that. And um, I used to be poor, but now I'm not. Now I'm on Instagram screaming. You should buy my course to find out how you can get rich as well by paying me. It's like, okay, 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 okay. Not what I meant. Not what I meant. And we're not going into that either today. I'm not putting on sad music in the background like ding, ding, ding. You also could have abs. Ding, ding, ding. If you would just. No, 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 no. We're not doing that today. The reason for today's topic, in all honesty. Why are you wearing the beanie again? Because I'm cold. Piss off. Is I have been watching some forum videos. And I have ran into two or three clients digitally. And if you want to become a digital client, the monthly accountability program is now full. However, if you want to be updated on the monthly accountability program, you can get on my email newsletter, get the exercise performance course for free, and be updated on one of new spots for the monthly accountability program is available again. Link in the chat. Boom, segue. But I noticed that there was a distinct lack of enthusiasm about lifting. Now, you might say, like, oh, but lifting is heavy. Who would be enthusiastic about that? Well, I'll tell you. People who enjoy improving, people who feel the stress of lifting, but not the mental stress of needing to lift, so to say. They don't feel pain. They don't feel agony. They feel the resistance of the weight instead of, let's say, the heaviness of the weight, if that makes sense, if that makes sense. What I mean by that is the enthusiasm comes from the strength they feel instead of the effort they have to put in, so to say. And you can see it when somebody is actually enjoying lifting. Whereas they control the weight a lot better. The weight doesn't control them. And there's just, the form is not being compensated for the weight. There's no exhaustion, and not pre-exhaustion or anything, but you know that feeling where you're just exhausted even before you begin to do something? You, You just are dreading it so much. 
Well, it's like, yeah, I mean, I haven't even squatted, but I'm already tired kind of thing. And that can have a multitude of reasons. The biggest one, and we said this before, could be my lack of sleep, external stress, job, family, whatever. It could be it. It could also be that you have progressed too fast, that your form and strength cannot actually keep up with the increments that you are using. And that's why I advocate for microblades so much. And this is why I keep saying that one of the uh, one of the key factors, let's call them that, in five by five, I disagree with, is the increments of five pounds per session for squat. Where it's like, yeah, apologies. Stop doing that. Where it's like, yeah, in theory, you can get a 225 uh, squat. In theory. In practice, not so much. Because it depends on your body weight. It depends on your height. It depends on your age. Depends on external stresses. You name it. So when I see such things, I always question. Or I always wonder, and therefore I ask them, what is this about? What is this about? Why you look like you're not having fun. You look like this is a chore for you, and you lift just because somebody told you you are lifting. And that's why I ask. And nine times out of ten, that's done, that's then not it. Hey. What is wrong with this thing? I don't know. But often that is not it. Usually it's just the strain of the weight. And then you look at the history of the program. Indeed, they have been going up with those five pounds. But Jack, aren't you the trainer? Blah, 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 blah. Yes, I am. I indeed am. And to a certain degree, that five pounds per session in a beginner isn't too much. However, there will be a point where the lifter reaches the point where his caloric intake and increasing of increments and strength level just not align, and that's where you get that plateau. And that's where you see where people get less enthusiastic about lifting. Now, to prevent that, you go with the microplates. Not Everybody always has microplates. Not everybody always wants to purchase microplates. So you have to work with what you have. So you go farther into this conversation of you look absolutely appalled by the activity of lifting. And then you find out it's the weight. It's just too heavy. It's too heavy for the body. The, the form is suffering because of it. And mentally, they're suffering because of it. Well, then you keep asking a bit because it might not be always, it might not always be the way. They say it's the way. But then you ask, are you also not enjoying the exercises like is squatting boring you? Is benching boring you? Is uh, dips, are they boring you? Uh, Bayesian arm curls, are they boring you? Like, are you sure it's the weight that you are not looking forward to? Or is it a certain exercise, a certain movement that you're bored with? No, 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 no. Like, I like squatting. I like benching. I like deadlifting. I like doing all that. It really is the weight. Okay. Now you're sure it's not the amount of it, like the sets, the reps. Like, is it all the sets where you're just noticing that the weight is too heavy, or maybe it's the last one? You want to do a set less, maybe change things up a bit. No, it's the weight. Boom. Then, indeed, it is the weight. Now, Jack, didn't they begin with the weight? Yes. But you, as a trainer, know more about lifting than your trainee, so to say. 
So you need to take those things into consideration because you don't want to decrease the weight unnecessarily. Could be that like the first sets are pretty awesome. Then that last one is just like, hmm. And then they tell you, yeah, I really don't feel like lifting and I don't feel like this. And it turns out they think squatting is just absolutely boring. Well, and I've said this before, what is the best schedule? The one that you can follow. What's the best diet? The one that you can follow. Now, I know I have said this before. I'm a big proponent of squats and benches and deadlift, the compound movements over isolation movements, because those are the most bang for your buck. However, you cannot get a bang for the buck if the buck isn't even made, if that makes sense. Uh, if your client isn't even going because he just hates the exercises, then, yeah, that's not going to happen. Now, I've had it before that some people really disdain the exercises because of the form. For some odd reason, they just couldn't get it. And that was demotivating them. But then what you have to look for is where did you start and where are you now? Because there's always some form of improvement somewhere. Comparing to like the first time they did it and what they're doing now. There's always something. But your trainee doesn't always see that. So you take them by the hand and say, well, this is your first form video and this is your form video now. I see a significant amount of progress. You're not where you want to be yet, but you're sure as hell not even close to where I don't want you to be. And then it's like, oh yeah, wait, I am improving. I am improving. And then that motivation is a bit back again because it can be demotivating not doing everything perfect. I mean, even I had it yesterday. We had a small little sparring session and the guy just kicked my ass. I'm like, fuck. But of course, like he had been doing that for ages and I haven't been doing it for that long. So of course. But that gives you room to improve. Like, I've improved a lot since I started. I can tell you that. And I still strain my wrist. Good job. <laughs> so these are the things that can motivate people. The exercises in general, the form, things like that, the amount of sets and reps, and indeed the weight. What if the weight indeed is just too heavy for them? The form is suffering, you name it. Now, I know 5x5 five five says take 10% off. I'd even go as far as 50. Uh, sorry, as 20. Not 50, no, as 20. I'd even go as far as 20. Why is that? It gives you more room to build it back up. Plus, it might be more motivating for the person in question. Maybe you're listening and you're less motivated to go to the gym right now. And you're like, I don't know what it is. Everything is just heavy. Everything is not working the way I want it to be. It is just, ugh. I'll lower the weight. Just lower the weight. Because, and I've said this before as well, consistency is the thing that's key. It's not per se the whole... Look, it's not per se the weight on the bar. It really isn't. It's that you keep going with it. Is that it is that in a certain way or another, you reach that point of fatigue in set lift. What would be implemented then? Oh, oh, that, that, sorry. Is an AMRAP, as many reps as possible. So even though you have a set amount of sets and reps with now 20% lighter than you used to be doing, which gives you more space or more wiggle room to focus more on form, to control the weight instead of letting the weight control you. But let's say you do want to feel a bit more of that fatigue. Use that new control that you learned and proper execution of form and perform as many reps as possible on that last set. And not like a speed run where it's like one, two, one, two, one, one, no. As many reps as your body allows you to do with proper form, no matter what the weight is in that sense, because we're not powerlifters, we're not competitors, 
in nine times out of 10, in my cases with my clients, we are recreational lifters. That's what I like to focus on. It is about creating an environment, a setting, and a program, a method where you actually feel excited to go and don't per se need the motivation because you're just enjoying it so much. Where it's like, yeah, you know what? I like going to the gym. I like doing these sets, doing these reps with proper form. I don't feel all messed up when I leave. I'm not in pain. I'm not jaded. I'm not angry. But I do feel like I did something. I didn't do much, but I did something. And I did it in a way that isn't harmful to myself. I did it in a way that doesn't make me feel like I'm doing it wrong. And I truly believe that is what motivating. Because you have a lot of these guys out there where it's like, yeah, man, no pee, no gain, lightweight, uh, blah, blah, blah. You name it, all the, all the tropes, all the fitness tropes out there. Where it's like, go, beast mode, whatever. It's like, look. It's all fine and dandy, and I'm sure it helps for a lot of youngsters out there. But there are guys that can't go as hard anymore. And they just want to lift. And they want to do it in a method, uh, in a way that doesn't hurt them. And that's why you need to step back on the whole weight thing. And find a method, find a way for the lifter to be enthusiastic, to look forward to the gym instead of dreading it, instead of not being excited for it. Motivation isn't per se, hey, you want to look hotter, right? Or you want to lose that weight, right? Or get the girls uh, with the abs. Uh. No. You can focus as well on, you know what? Lifting is quite fun. Just the mental aspect of it. The endorphin rush, things like that. It is just fun to do. And when you have that, you have that like excitement for it. All the rest of it will come with it. You will get stronger. You will get better with it. You will get leaner because of it. You will be get stronger because of it. And you will get the girls and the abs because of it. And that's kind of the message I want to leave you today with. <sighs> and that was a 18-minute rant. 18-minute rant. Hit the like if you haven't yet. It's not very busy today. Tuesday... 3 p.m. my time is not the best time. Maybe I should have sticked to 4 p.m., but oh well. You'll win some, you lose some. But with that, I'm also going to end it. Um, if you're interested in personal training by me, the monthly accountability program is now closed. But if you want to stay updated on the monthly accountability program where you will get a personalized schedule, personalized diet plan, weekly form checks, and uh, access to our private Discord with four other like-minded people and a monthly group consultation you can get on my email newsletter get the exercise performance course for free and be updated on when the monthly accountability program has a spot opening up again mind you there is um some responsibility in there i expect that you send those form videos if you do not send those form videos three weeks in a row, you will be, th uh, you will be like, it will be canceled. Your subscription will be canceled. Or if you do not show up during the consultation without notice, your subscription will be canceled. So yes, there is some responsibility on your side to take as well. Uh, other than that, what else have we got? Hit the like, subscribe if you haven't. And if you want my version of the Book of Pook audiobook for free, you can click the join button and get access to it and get a Pokemon named after you because we're doing uh, Pokemon Gold right now during the membership streams. 
Um, that was it for me for today. Guys on the uh, rewatch, hope to see you soon, and I will probably see you Thursday. Cheers. Boom, boom.